All right. Hello, everybody. Your audio hijack is, is recording now? Yeah, yeah, audio hijack is going. I see the audio. I see it in OBS. We good. Great. All right. Good evening, internet people. This is Jeff and Dom make a game. I'm Dom. I'm Jeff. I, I, I guess I have to be Jeff. There's only two of us. Yeah, we can't switch. You know, I just watched uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead last night, two nights ago. Nice. Uh, and I love how much they switch characters during that. Um, I need to watch that again, actually. I, I, I have to admit that that movie went over my head. Oh, I think it's, I think it would be up your alley. But it, you know what? If it's, if it's too over your head, you know how The Lion King is Hamlet? Okay. Uh, the Lion King one and a half is Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. They made a Timon and Pumbaa movie and based it off the Tom Stoppard play. They did. Disney did. Disney did. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Respect. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Sophisticated they, move. I know they were like very clear. Like someone asked the director and they was like, "Wait, did you? Is this Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead?" And he was like, "Oh yeah, obviously." Like. I love that. I love that play. Um, so you can always you can always see Lion King one and a half instead. I do wonder if it was the accents. Like there are some thick accents in in Rosencrantz and Guildenstern Dead. And, and they and they talk fast. They talk yes. really fast. So in, in a sense, it, it actually has a similar. It's a similar experience to watching any Shakespeare, which mm -hmm. is that I kind of don't understand it, even though it's my language, right? <laughs> What the the thing I like most about I I've never seen the play I've only seen the the film production of it but I love how occasionally they have to do Hamlet because like whenever they interact with the Hamlet characters that they're just like well we have to do exactly the words uh, and it's amazing what utter nonsense it sounds like compared to the actual characters talking outside of the Hamlet scenes um, right. so <laughs> yeah it it makes the Shakespeare seem even sillier somehow. So I think that I, I'd have to go back and watch it again. There's all this rewatching that I'm gonna try to do. We've been we've been pretty strong on our, our movie project in quarantine, and like have been watching a lot of a lot of rewatching, a lot of just like wow, I've never seen that. I'd I'd never seen Ten Things I Hate About You, which was a huge mistake. The movie's amazing. Wow, uh, that was Julia Stiles and Heath Ledger. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, like, I want to go and see uh, Akira again, mm -hmm. um, just to just for the visuals, really. Um, I was uh, I actually subscribed to Disney Plus pretty much just to watch The Mandalorian. I don't know if you've seen that yet. Uh, I have. It's amazing. It was so freaking it's, good. It's really good. Yeah, it's really good. But um, Gina Carano is awesome. She plays Kara, mm -hmm. the uh, the former rebel shock trooper. She was amazing, um, yeah. And uh, she's in a mo her first movie after she like retired from MMA was uh, a movie called Haywire. Did you see this? It was oh. actually directed by Steven Soderbergh, uh, who I have a lot of time for. Uh, he's amazing, <laughs> and uh, it's this movie where she's like this like assassin slash mercenary. And she just like beats the shit out of, I think in order, uh, Michael Fassbender, Channing Tatum, and then Ewan McGregor. She just like kicks the shit out of all three of those guys. And that's like oh, the whole movie basically. That's kind of amazing. I love that. Yeah. You should watch Haywire if you haven't seen it yet. Make it the okay. next thing you see. It's really good. Deal. Deal. Um, fuck yeah. Is it, oh, wait, is it on Disney Plus? That's the important question. Uh, it is not on Disney Plus. I think it's on. Hmm. I think it's free on either Netflix or Amazon, which ah. presumably you have. Good enough. Yeah. What I... is this dope CPU monitor you have here? What is this? Oh, this is I iStat Menus. Okay. I was kind of curious, like what was going on, and the answer is, everything is running really hard all the time. <laughs> yeah, I see. I, I love how you have a temperature monitor as well. <laughs> this, this it just you don't get a choice i'm sorry the stream can't yes. see this but like you don't get a choice it's delightful for a segment uh, of the of the of the population uh knowing the temperature of your computer is like a super relevant piece of information right? 
<laughs> I'm, you know what? I'm very excited to have better upload bandwidth than the 10 megabits I'm getting right now because I'm using basically all of it. So yeah. Uh, so what everybody's referring, what, what 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 Dom is referring to is that he's about to get fiber uh, in his house, fiber. and it's going to be amazing. I need yeah. I need more fiber in my diet. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to have a thousand up and a thousand down. Yeah. G God bless. That's just incredible. You know what I'm going to do? Well, I'm gonna, get into I'm gonna, it. Yeah, I'm going to play some PlayStation Now once I have that, because I'll be able to stream games for once. Oh, PlayStation Now. Is that just, is that literally the same thing as like Google Stadia? They, they run the game on a server, and then they just... Yeah, they've had, it, the they've had it for years, and if you want to play PS3, it's the only way. I guess you could buy a PS3. And they had, I think they bought another company called Gaikai, or something like that, right? Yep. It was like some other game streaming company. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A decade ahead of its time sort of thing and is it is it actually viable there's so much about the it whole seems idea like it is really okay because because we're going to get into this with yolo rts the game that mm -hmm. we're making right now because we're going to do net play hopefully oh yeah um yeah or we can just make our kind of like transgressive art game which it kind of already is <laughs> right? i mean Boy, let me let me tell you. I like. I'm torn on making like strange strange art creation versus like the actual game we set out to make because yes. this is wonderful. Well, but uh, we'll get there. Yeah, I was about to talk trash about celebrities, but maybe I should try to keep the stream positive. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, po posy vibes only, as they say. Okay, yeah, because I was about to talk about uh, art games and uh, scandals of the art game world. Oh, uh, well, there was a huge but, one today where that guy was a dick. <laughs> uh, maybe we're thing. talking. We're going to talk about the same thing. Uh, are you talking about Jason Rohrer by chance? Yeah, he's the one who made Passage, right? Yes. Yeah, what? Yes. We, I I saw it this morning and I was like, that's stupid, and I forgot what it was. Should we, we get into it? this? Is this is this what's happening now? We're gonna, just going to talk about it. Well, let's. I, maybe maybe we'll keep it at. Perhaps COVID. Facts. Perhaps you should pay attention to COVID. <laughs> Yes. The facts are Jason Rohr, uh, darling of the indie game scene in the aughts, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a true pioneer of uh, games as metaphor. Uh, I will include no judgment uh, or hindsight looking back. Uh, but he tweeted some things about uh, the COVID world that we live in right now um, and about uh, its relationship to our rights as Americans. It's pretty Anyways, icy. those are the facts. Yeah. My, my impression of this guy was Passage, which was really cool. And then the game about shooting people who break into your house, which was some Second Amendment trash. So, you know, I think I missed that, that one. Oh, I'll send you some videos afterwards. The Castle Doctrine. It's all about setting up elaborate booby traps to kill someone breaking in. And just oh, like... Oh, the, this is yeah. like the Floridian Castle Doctrine. Where we're yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it wasn't it's weird. <laughs> it wasn't uh, it, it wasn't satirical. I don't think like so. a Hotline Miami kind of thing or, or... no. I mean, I, dude's a dude's a libertarian. Yeah, he has kind of like a back to the land profile. You know, and yeah. I'm not trying to like. There's a documentary of him like living with his unclothed children on 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 a, on a plot of land. Let's say. He has a right. documentary? That's something. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyways. Enough about Jason Rohr. Uh, enough gossip. Agreed. Uh, let's let's keep making the game. So today, we're going to think about particles and maybe make some destructible objects. Is that is that what we were settling on? Yeah. Well, what we got from last time was we have the ability for both the tank and the bullets to hit the walls. Those are the gray tiles that we see on the map there. Yeah. And uh, it works relatively well. Uh, and we have some infrastructure uh, in the code to kind of make that relatively easy to do. Mm -hmm. um, so now that we can hit the walls with bullets, uh, I guess there are a couple of different things we can do. We can either do some visual effects to make that feel a little bit more real, mm -hmm. or uh, we can um, do some logical effects. So we can maybe logically change the walls, right? We can damage the walls, we can destroy the walls, 
right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think I'd like to start. I'd like to start with destroying them, and then like we can think about you know bullet, bullet explosion, bullet patter, or like if the walls have a little poof or something. Um, yeah. I was thinking. I was thinking that you know it should take more than one bullet to crack open a wall. Like maybe yeah, four four or five, and maybe we need to turn down our, our shooter speed too, because that's pretty fast. Yeah. So uh, I think the original Bolo, it took like ten hits, to destroy a wall, something crazy. Okay, that sounds right. Sweetheart. Is that your cat? Yeah, she that's can't adorable. go outside, but she really wants to. What's her What's her name? Mrs. Vesper. She's our She's one of our new kittens, and is. We let her we let her explore the house today and now she wants nothing else but to leave this room. <laughs> fine. Okay. Well Vesper is like the, the true the true star of the stream, I think. I, it's extremely true. Um so yeah, so you were saying, sorry, ten ten bullets to destroy a wall segment. I, I don't know if it's ten. It feels like incredibly tedious. Like the walls feel really spongy. Okay. But yeah. you know that's But we don't have to like I mean, this is homage. It is not, uh, not you know, rank imitation. You know? True. So we can True. kind of we can kind of do what we want. Could could you lay down your own walls in the original? You can. You can build okay. walls. It's a big yeah. part of it. Yeah. It would be yeah. I, I, I can see why they're spongy. If this is yeah. if this is your defense against multiplayer, that that makes sense. Yeah, it's um, supposed to be a deterrent, right? So that that kind of determines, I think, how durable we want to make them. Right? Mm -hmm. so, so we have a wall component, and it didn't mm -hmm. have anything in it, and we were just like we were basically using it as a tag, right? Because the wall collider mm. component looks for other entities that have the wall component on it, and so all we were really doing with the wall component was just using it as a label, more or less, right? Right, and so the wall collider, do we ever get, we do keep track of the entity, which is other, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, entity, yeah, okay. And this entity is the collection returned by make entity for walls. Great. Right. Because, um, yeah, it would be, if that wall is undefined, gotcha. So by the time we get down here, uh i guess if the see, this is where our, our logic i feel like is gonna it already starts to get a little fuzzy but if the thing colliding it's a bullet we want to tell the wall something um yeah so maybe we should look at bullets real quick so they get a wall collider they get a bullet script and actually the you know the wall collider has hit last frame it could also like keep track of the, the wall that was hit, basically. Is that crazy? You definitely could. Yeah. So that was what I was thinking, is the wall collider could have an array of entities or wall components that it is hit, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it can clear that list at the start of every frame and then populate it in the update, something like that, right? Yep, that makes sense. Uh, so let's see. So I, this hit last frame. Uh, it gets set. It gets reset at the end. Okay. So I think we start every run through of the wall collider with this, and then we're never going to. Let's see. Oh, we do filter out. So we get a filtered set of these, right? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Um, and basically, uh, I guess it's... It's, it's just this it's collided. It's collided, yeah. I think collided is a little bit more complicated because it's like a bundle of things. Right? Yeah, but We made collided... a tuple, and you really just want the first element. Yeah, that, exactly. Right? So, so here, after we do our filtering, we'll say uh, track walls that were collided with. And there's... This doesn't feel overly specific to me. I feel like there's a lot of good reasons to want to to want to like know which wall you ran into. So yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
So this dot collided walls, something yep. like that. Yeah, this dot collided walls equals collided dot map, and then uh, c c zero. Yep, brilliant. Cool. Oh, I do like this. And then let's add this to the wall collider. Got to do everything twice in TypeScript. That's the spirit. Right. Um, and then where does our uh, bullet script get run relative to the wall collider uh, component? That'd oh, be that's the entity a, class. That's a great question. Yeah. Um, before. OK. So so um, I, I, have, I have a couple thoughts there. Um, Perhaps we need like a second set of components that are damager and damageable that run at the end. Yes, I like that. Because um, yeah, like bullets are damagers, players and walls are damageable, and that's we can track health. Uh, and basically, damageable will be the source of hit points, and when it hits zero, it'll know to take itself out of the loop. Yeah. Okay. Let's make a new file. Do you have a better name for that, by the way? Um, no, I, mean, like, I think this okay. is fine. Yeah. This could be like health.ts. Uh, this, this maybe feels like the right thing, though. Um, I think, I think my, my main concern is that these names are a little too close. I'll just take shooter because it's a nice short class. Damager, so let's see, Damager probably has a um, damage value. We'll set it up with a variable thing, but it'll probably always be one. And then, okay, so for this, we're going to look at our entity. We're basically going to see if our entity has a wall collider. Entity dot wall collider dot collided walls. Yeah. So I think I think our colliders need to maybe get a little more generic. Yeah. At, at some point. I'm trying to think here. It... I'm trying to piece of piece together like whether amateur because like basically something's gonna have to decide that okay i guess this is the damager this is it's actually the logic that you're writing here um yeah. whether damager is the right name i'm not sure yet basically that's what's going on in my head right now i i agree because it's what i think what we're really doing is we're actually damager is actually just like a separate piece of logic for bullets specifically, right? This is going to end up being like a very bullet specific piece of logic. And so bullets, but also uh, mines, maybe there's other things that could damage in the system. Yeah. Um, so what I would say, though, is that mines probably don't care about colliding against walls, right? Exactly. So there's going to be stuff in here that's like based on my interactions with the rest of the world, what am I doing damage to? And that might be specific to each entity type, which is a little bit tricky. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was, I feel like, I feel like the, the collider itself might be what gets more generic, because I kind of want to know what I ran into. And what I'd like to say is if C dot damageable, then, then we do damage. Yeah, I mean, one way that the damager uh, component could be written, this gets really JavaScripty, modern JavaScripty, is you could construct it with a function. You pass in a function that says, "Give me all the damageables that you have deemed to have been damageable during this." Uh, oh, that's cute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? And then it. All the damageable component then does is like it basically does mesh processing at a specific point in the update loop. Yep. Right. 
that makes sense. Um, okay, yeah, let, let's. I like that. Let's let me refactor that real quick. Um, I was just gonna do this real quick. Entity dot game dot entities dot mark for deletion. Yeah. Entity. This dot health. Damageable is easy. I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so yeah, I. Uh, so you were saying construct. Uh, mm, construct it with a function. Oh, okay, yeah, we're gonna um, get targets. Yeah, or, or get damageables or get hits or something like that. Yeah, I like get hits, okay. Yeah. Uh, this dot get hits. Thank you. Boy, why do I think that's actually always in scope? Um, maybe you've been doing a lot of job or something like that recently. Mm, doesn't seem likely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So let's see. Let's hop into common. Let's give these damage. Of... Damage. -er. Or interface I really I really like the way the system came out. Um, yeah. We didn't figure out how to make TypeScript like a little more friendlier about this, but it yeah feels really it feels like a really nice way to add an encapsulated behavior. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think the one modification I would make is. This is like not nothing we need to solve right now. But right now, the order of component updates is like entity one. I'm gonna uh, update components A through Z, and right. then entity two. I'm gonna update components A through Z, and then entity three. I'm gonna component update components A through Z. And I think it makes more sense to say component one update entity one through ten, component two update entity one through ten. That sort of thing. So we basically yeah. want to, uh, what do you call it? Uh, transpose mm -hmm. the updates. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Oops, implements. Cool. Do, um, mm -hmm. do we need to expose any of these properties or are all these private essentially, do we think? Oh, that's a, Good question. Um, oh, this needs to get hits. Yeah. I think so. Damage value. Huh. Seems like they can all be kind of private. Well, maybe we can answer that question later. We we haven't filled out the interfaces yet, right? True. The interfaces true, 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 true. are all blank. I don't think get hits needs to be there, right? Um, in the interface. Does it that not... can be private, I think. Ah, I see what you're saying. At the very least, yeah. Yes, because really it's just part of our constructor. Uh -huh. Yeah. Agreed. Oops. Um, why is, oh, I got these backwards, didn't I? Damager is damage value, damageable is health. Happy. Happy, cool. Um, so I guess like the what I was thinking is that health does need to be see that damageable. Oops. Like this absolutely needs to be accessible. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. But damage damager might be a generic component. I, I get I get what you're you get what you're saying. I guess. Yeah. It's interesting because if this, if get hits isn't in the signature, like, does it know that it needs it in the constructor? I guess so, because we, we're, imp we're importing damager, not the other yeah. thing. And what's interesting is that because it is an interface, mm -hmm. this gets hits thing we're doing here maybe doesn't need to be like maybe we're be maybe I was being too clever. Like what we could do is just make a class that is the bullet damager. 
Ah. Do you see what I'm saying? Because it satisfies yep. the interface, right? Hmm. And then get hits doesn't need to be this like dependency injected logic. It, we just have a, a, a damager class for the bullet. I like that. Yep. And you could even put this class into the bullet.ts file, make it local mm -hmm. there, don't even export it, and it's just there, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which we did with bullet script. Ah, yeah. that's clever. Cool. Yeah. Yep, that makes a ton of sense. I like that. And, and bullet script we probably should rename eventually. It's, it's really resolving the motion of the bullet, right? We just threw it in there because it didn't move like the tank. Right. Clean that up. Um, so I just want to make sure yeah, everything is still still happening. Um, so then e dot damager equals new bullet damager. Ah, uh, what's the constructor? Oh, with the damage value. I'm I'm gonna keep that parameterized just because I like it. Okay. Feels for some reason it feels like the bullet is where we should be setting this property, just like the path renderables. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's see. This also needs a damageable I. Damager. God, these words already look strange to me. Love when that happens. <laughs> yeah. We are definitely in, like, strong, strong object-oriented programming land right now, right? Where all the names start to feel a little bit weird. Yeah. And, and you know what? Lots of languages have this problem, right? Mm -hmm. um, isn't it, it? Go Go has the thing where like anything that implements an interface has an er at the end of it, right? So it's it's actually kind of similar to what we're. Yeah. Is that how that? Yeah. I haven't done enough Go to be honest. Um, and then uh, a similar thing, like in Rust, they have traits. So they say that like a particular mm. struct interface in Rust implements different traits. And then the, 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 the conventional way of talking about it in Rust is you say it, this object or this struct type is the name of the trait. Um, so some of the traits are like debug, uh, clone, copy, uh, a lot of these are verbs, right? But you say, like, you know, this struct I created is clone, or it is debug, you know? So, they, they like, every language has this kind of, like, weird verb-noun confusion yeah. that they get into, you know? Hey, by, by the way, I'm destroying these walls. Oh, nice. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. That's rad. <laughs> That's so rad. Yeah. Man, very cool. You're making a game, Dom. We're making We're a making, game. We're making it's the a name game. of the stream. I, dude, I love it. It's very, yeah. very good. Yeah. Um. Mm, okay. So here's here's a thought. Mm -hmm. I would love path renderable to. I would love this color to change as we damage. We could totally do that. Yeah, we're gonna have to change how this works a little bit. Um, well, the wall, like wall, could implement a wall damageable that does something special, or you know, actually, it... dam damageable just needs to take a callback for like, like really, it's just do anything, and it's. Uh, e dot path renderable dot fill style if this was public equals you know yeah we need to do some color scaling here right maybe yeah. we um, we figure out like to what like how like what is the maximum and minimum gray and we just set that like we linearly interpolate between I mean does it become more dark or more light it probably right, becomes lighter wondering. yeah right. Um, but like, you know, even if it takes a little something for, if it changes color just once when hit, but yeah, I see, I definitely want to like, yeah, yeah, do some, do some multiplication on this. Yeah. Um, 
That's cool, though. How do you feel about this as a callback for damaged or damageable? Um, I think that's totally fine. The other way to do this is to set a flag on damageable that says, I was damaged this round, this round. And then have another component that's like the pre-render component that has custom oh. logic per entity. And then it checks the damageable, the damageable uh, component and say, Where, was I hit? Mm -hmm. Or what is my current hit points? Full stop. And then like update my, update my, my like renderable stuff as a result of that. So that, that's just like another way of doing the same thing, right? Yeah. It's interesting. It's, that's kind of what I wanted. I expected script to, to do. Yeah, I guess the thing is, script is so generic, and yeah. order matters so much. And what is script doing for us right now? But it's all it's doing is processing um, entity motion. So uh, maybe to pursue mm -hmm. this tangent a little bit further, because I was thinking about this as we were talking about this before. Uh, if you mm -hmm. go back to the entity class, yeah. Do you notice how player control and script are right next to each other? These, these are movers, yeah. Yeah, those are those are basically movers. Yes, exactly. I like and you that. have a mover for. Uh... Yeah, and then and then script is like you want to do something at the end, and I, I like that as at least a generic catch-all. Yeah, I mean, or or you could call it the pre-render, something like that. That sounds really good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and in and fact, you could even put it into render, right? You could stick it. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so this is starting to look like React a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, like... A little bit. Yeah. Um, but but mover definitely feels much much more correct to me for this. Um, mm -hmm. mover, bullet mover, and I think it gets to be a generic. Let's look at player control real quick. Also a totally generic component, right? Yep. Uh, great. Common. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. We we were very. Already on the right page, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know the, the the abstractions that we're making have have some legs, right? Like we, we can tell that things are kind of starting to lock interlock in a pleasing way, which is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we called it uh, pre render, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I should I should get better at fully um, refactoring. Yeah, with VS Code, but that's fine. Nah. Yeah. This is great. How did also, you delete the whole line? What'd you do right there? Oh, I'm just I'm selecting and then Command X, Command. The, that's the, triple click that you're doing. Triple click, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I know, I know there's like a shortcut for this, and I do not know or use it. <laughs> well, it's DD and VI, but who uses VI? <laughs> is is it you? Do you use VI? Uh, I use VI when I'm on a server, for sure. Nice. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I had literally 10 years ago uh, VI imposter syndrome, and I, I like embarked on like a month long quest to become like a VR v, VI guru. No shit. <laughs> uh, who's the dude that does the VI uh, streams? Destroy All Software is the name of his. Oh, Gary website. Bernhardt. Gary Bernhardt. Yeah, he's the what guy, right? Um, he's he's hilarious. I love him. Yeah, and he's like like uh, like the VI TDD guru. Of, of yeah, Rand. he's kind of uh, fallen off though. I wonder. I feel like he stopped doing that, or he stopped. He decided he didn't want to be funny anymore. Oh yeah, I, I I don't know what happened, but like you, if you're like kind of like junior mid level in your profession, and you watch that guy work. It's just kind of like, oh my god, I'm never going to be good at this, right? Because he's just like <laughs> so hyper efficient at everything, to the degree that I'm not actually sure if he gets anything done. He's just like he's good at being efficient, <laughs> but like, you know. <laughs> um, but so, uh, I, I wanted to be like Gary Bernhardt, and I wanted to learn VI really well, and so I went through Vim Tutor, which is great. I don't know if you've used Vim Tutor before, but it's really uh -huh. good. It comes with Vim. You just type Vim Tutor on the console. And opens uh and i got that far and then like i don't know like a month into it i was like what am i doing because i would like go back into sublime text or whatever and be like 10 times as effective with the mouse and all that stuff and i was like you know what i'll, I'll, I'll just i'll just like when i don't have a mouse or when i don't have like an editor when i'm logged into a server this is vi is all i got and i think i've got enough <laughs> but yeah 
That's my VI story. I love it. TED Talk over. <laughs> oh, delightful. All right, so you did a lot of refactoring. Uh, dial me in here. You. Uh... Oh, I. I think I just got the pre-render and mover, all the way all the way through. I just renamed shit. Fantastic. We're, we're yeah. back to where we were. Yep. Um, and I've got this display wall damage pre-render component that I was starting to starting to work on, um, yep. which takes the entity, so it's entity dot path renderable dot, and I guess we have to. Well, we'll make. I guess we got to make fill style a property. Yeah. Path renderable. I do love that this is all it takes to bring that into common accessibility. Right. I also love that we can do that. Um, equals. I don't think we can do that. I don't think it can be on the left side like that. Can't. Uh, hmm. Oh, because it's probably, well, it's probably a const right now. Is that what you're uh, supposed it, to? I don't, I, I just don't think you can have question mark expressions on the left-hand side of an assignment statement. Oh. Right, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Save that. But I Save think it's OK to just like let it fail if it's null. Because like I, I think it's a reasonable invariant, like a runtime invariant, to have here. Uh, right. Uh, that, okay, that, fine. Yeah, I know. Yeah. TypeScript makes me nervous, even though it wasn't angry for some reason. Can we, Does TypeScript have type refinement where you can like make assertions and it'll know? Like, can you make oh. an assertion on line 10 that says, like, it's not null? And then everything else after that will, like, accept that it's not null. Yeah. I mean, it's essentially what this is doing, right? Because now... Yes, you're, you're, you're exactly right. Um, what I don't like about this is that it makes it seem like it could not be null, when in fact, like, it is a reasonable invariant, almost statically, that it should be, like, there. Yeah, which I mean, I would honestly, claim is a is a weakness of our component system, right? Because our weakness, the, our component system, is no longer giving you the type safety of saying like you have to have these end components, right? Yep. Anyways. Yeah, it, and it's strange to uh, honestly, I would expect TypeScript to be less happy about this, <laughs> but it's not. Yeah. I think the reason why is the reason why might be because um, you do this all the time in JavaScript, and it was just like going to be too noisy to have to complain about this type of thing. I don't know. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Const per. Got to make sure we're in floating point. Yep. Um, so yeah, were you were you actually suggesting scaling the colors here? What is what is available to us for this? Uh, can we actually do RGBA? Oh, we can. Great. There's there's the math. Um, yeah. And then yeah, too bad that fill style is a string. It's ridiculous, right? It's just it's just wonderful. Um, so let's see. Yeah, let's do it. Nice. Uh, and then we probably need to floor it. Do you think? I don't know. Maybe RGBA is. Oh yes. That's great. That's so if you that's want to be like, pretty cool. It's pretty cool, right? If you want to be a total lead coder, um, mm -hmm. percentage, usually we refer to these types of things that go from zero to one as alpha. Um, mm. yeah. I guess perhaps this is my web background, but I didn't call it that because of this. Uh, oh. Because we have an alpha channel that we're passing as one. Oh, got it. Uh, yeah, uh, we could call it scale as well. That's another I way like, we could. I like scale, yeah. Um, yeah. And so actually, like, I think, let's, let's see. I want to do this. 
I want to establish a range of like yeah. 160 to yeah, so we never hit pure black basically. Yep. Yep, totally. And what you're doing is called a lerp, linear interpolation, right? You can basically um, huh. generally every game engine will have this function in its primitives uh, where you'll you'll pass in the minimum, the maximum, and then how far along between them you want it to be. Right, right. Oh, yeah, I've seen that in Unity. It's actually extremely cool for doing some fun manipulations. Yep. And you can do that to not just colors, but like seemingly anything. Yeah, it's a great. Uh, and then, like, it doesn't always have to be linear. Like, you can have a whole kind of like um, slider library or, or, or interpolation right. library. And it, you could put it on a cubic curve or, or you can make it quadratic or, you know, you can basically have all different kinds of splines that you basically stick it onto if you want different effects, right? That's um, so neat. Yeah. Oh, I like this You know what's neat though. is the thing that you just wrote, Dom. This is very neat. This kind of feels uh, suddenly more game-like. Yeah. yeah. OK, so cool. What's the effect we're modeling here if it's getting darker? Is that smoke and char kind of? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's becoming more and more rubble, more and more burned. Yeah. I'm, fire I'm firing a pink laser at it, so like. <laughs> it, must, it must be hot. How does the hit detection feel? Does it feel good? It's okay. Feels it feels it, a, a little squishy. Yeah, the algorithm is very crude, right? Uh, yeah. Because each bullet is a, a whole tile in size, right? Yeah, it it, it it's forgiving. That's for yeah. sure. Which is okay. Um, it is, especially if if the tank moves around this fast. Like, I I can evade these bullets, pretty pretty heartily so like you know not having them yeah oops i lost myself yeah not not having them like be super precise is fine if we're playing another player uh Th this is a fast as hell tank though that's for sure <laughs> it's maybe too fast relative to the bullets but uh yeah well i really i enjoy the dragging with the bullet yeah we should maybe slow the tank down <laughs> You are so much better at driving the tank than me. Also, like I, when I drive this, like I can barely get it to hit the walls. Uh, Wait, really? Yeah, I have a hard time. Huh. I have a hard time with control style. Is it um, because it's tank controls? Should we make it not tank controls? Well, no, it's the tank controls are is part of the problem. The other part of the problem is that the forward button is right next to the left and right button, and I have a hard time. Like I, if I was using two hands, it would be easier. Right, like if I if it was like A and D to turn, to rotate, and mm -hmm. then forward and back to move forward and back, I bet it would be easier for me to drive. But oh, maybe not. I don't do know. You have, I might... Do you have an inverted T keypad? You have the shitty version. I, I do have the shitty. Well, the sh I have the uh, the full head left and right before, before twenty nineteen. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on. I've got my I've got my fancy. Whoops, I've got my fancy. Upside down T, which is really oh, helping. That's actually. what it is. It's your, it's your, yeah, because up... MX switches on your elite coder keyboard. I mean, we're, we're making a game, so I got a gaming keyboard. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry, not sorry. Where's my RGB lights though? I've it's lost totally my good. RGB. I'm, I'm. How do you crushed. make the lights go up? Is there like a button that just does like do some cool light stuff? I mean, it used to be. It used to be pressing. I used to be making light under my fingers every time I pressed a key. Oh. I think I've I've somehow turned off RGB and I'm very, very sad. Yeah, it's fine. This is important important stream information. My yeah, doesn't I mean, light up it, anymore. it really should like you should just be playing some like exciting drum and bass in the background and like have the keyboard be aware of the tempo of the music and stuff. <laughs> I just I just got my hue lights to do that, so uh, no joke, it's great. <laughs> The hue lights are aware of the the music that you're playing. If you pipe it through your computer, yeah, the computer will send a rough approximation of the audio to your lights, or it'll send your video colors to your lights off the screen, which is super cool. Nice. Hey man, I got a nerd out in quarantine about something, and it's making games and fixing my lights. Yeah. Um. Cool. All right. So. I love this. What were you thinking next? Particles? Um, so if we do particles, I think we're going to want to do better collision detection. 
That's what actually, that's actually the heart. Well, we don't have to. Um, what we want to do is we want to know wh where are we going to draw the particle, right? And mm -hmm. how are we going to represent the particle? And then we can worry about positioning the particle precisely later. Are you yeah. slowing the tank down and speeding the bullets up? I was trying to, happening? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, will there come a day that we're gonna we're gonna clip the bullets into the play field, or is Gosh. that just not not ever gonna happen? Gosh, what if we never did? Yeah. <laughs> That's a little better. Yeah. It feels more like a tank, at least. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, why why would anybody want to stop this? That's my real question. It's it's true. You can make your own tribal tattoo design. People are going to be like screenshotting this and then like taking it into their illicit prohibition COVID-19 tattoo parlor and saying, I want you to like put this on my ass. <laughs> Bright vermilion. Boy, I aspire to that. So <laughs> that if that's where this game ends up, I would call it a, a smashing success for, for the world. Um, but yeah, so, so you're saying that this this is actually just so imprecise that it'd be hard to show well, sort of what a good hit looks like. You know, I, I don't actually don't think it matters. I think we have a couple of different concerns. Mm -hmm. One is to position the particle emitter at the right place. That'll mm -hmm. require us to update our our collision detection. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we can still spawn a particle emitter just using some arbitrary heuristic, right? Could even just say that if the wall was hit, create a particle emitter at the, at the control point of the wall. It'll probably look pretty cool, right? Mm. I was thinking also you could, you could put the particle emitter, like we could place it like a couple of frames ahead of where the bullet was heading. Cause the, it'll always look like it's coming out the, like it's hitting at the point of the bullet. If oh, we do that. that's a very clever way to do it. Yeah, and that's that's a way to do it without worrying about collision detection, right? Yeah, because because at least visually it will it'll communicate what's happening. Yes. Okay. So how 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 do I particle? Okay. Uh, well, you could make it an entity. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, that's not the way it's done. Uh. The reason why is that the concerns of an entity and the concerns of a particle tend to be quite different, right? They both the have chan an the chances of us interacting with it are like very low, right? Yeah, almost no interaction whatsoever. So a lot of this like infrastructure that we've built up about being collidable or movable or being a shooter or not a shooter or whatever the hell that is, like it's just not applicable. Um, yeah. So generally, what we have is like not even a particle, but like a particle system is actually mm. kind of a lot of the ways that this, this ends up getting structured. And particles themselves end up being a bag of data, a bag of properties. How old am I? What is my color? It's like, mm. how, how many particles do I have? Okay. Sort of thing. And then you end up just like tuning the emitter with different properties. And then you just spawn the emitter and when the emitter's done, it, it kills itself. Right. Gotcha. So, so it's like, um, I don't know, it's like num, num particles, uh, right. What did we call yeah. it in bold? Well, we could make a particle emitter a, an entity, but it really wouldn't do anything. All it would do, all, all it has is update and render. Basically. Yeah. So it's kind of this, um, so maybe this is like the basic thing, which is like, how many times am I going to spawn? The thing, and then what is how long do I keep doing it? Oh, maybe it's yeah. like uh, there's there's two things. There's like particle lifespan and emitter lifespan because like the particles could live for a fraction of the duration of the emitter, and we're gonna keep shooting them out, right? Yes. Cool. Um, I'm, try I'm trying to then... like imagine how how you would model this. Right, and then the. the... Num particles is like how many you want to like. You could model this any number of different ways. It could be just like, what is your rate of, what is your rate of emission, and then how what is what is what how long are you going to be emitting for? Mm -hmm. It could be I want to emit exactly 100 particles, at this rate. That's roughly equivalent to the same thing because those all those all multiply to be the same thing, right? It's like right. 
there's going to be a, a fixed quantity given a fixed rate of emission and time. And there's going to be a fixed time given a fixed quantity and fixed rate of emission, right? Um, yeah. I like I like rate yeah. lifespan because that feels like a nice like you you do it you've got an easy check on like ha, should I add more or not um, yeah yeah and then uh, this particle emitter might also have a a cone of effect mm. so the cone of effect would be like an orientation and then right it definitely has uh, it has position and orientation for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it has its initial position, and then it has an orientation. Uh, but the cone of effect could also be 360 degrees, right? Um, so. Uh, I see. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's like width. Is that what we're talking about? Uh, or or what, what do you what do you call? Radius. Uh, I guess like it depends on the particle there. But if we're saying this is like. This is like a, anything from a full like circle burst to like a fraction of a circle shotgun thing. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's basically how 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 wide of a slice of pizza is it? Right? Okay. Is it the whole pizza? Is it half a pizza, or is it just one of a slice of twelve? Right. Um, and what would you call that? Arc length. It arc. Yeah. Arc. I think arc is fine. Arc sized, okay. something like that. Yeah. Um, gotcha. Okay. And then, uh, you know what? I would actually say let's actually just like write a particle emitter without worrying about how we're going to parameterize it, and then we'll extract the parameters as we want to make it a little bit more general. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I mean, this was, I think, mostly sort of me thinking about what the what the writing would look like as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. How do we? What what has a position these days? Player? I would put it in the game actually. You know, you could just have in the game a list of particle emitters that you render an update, oh. right? That makes sense. So this dot particle, this dot emitters dot update, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. It's on game. That's great. Yeah. So that means everything can add to this. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. I think it was just called emitters, right? Oh, yep. Yeah. You could call it particle emitters, whatever. Nah. Nah. Need an update. Andre. And cool. probably we'll need to pass the context in there. Oh, it's render, absolutely. Thank you. And give me a give me the path render bowl. Yeah. I guess I guess we don't need entity though. That's safe. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, great. Okay. Um, right. So entity. I was to say, what takes a position? It's actually the game, and then the play field. It's the transform. I mean, should these just have a transform? Is that is that weird? Um. Well, they're not really component. They're not really component bearing objects. If you okay. thought of the transform as, yeah, the, the, they, they have a world position, but they're not world meaningful, I guess, uh, in a logical sense. Cool. OK. So basically, uh, the update is going to consist of two phases. One of one phase is to update all of your particles, mm -hmm. and one phase is to spawn or to, to control the life the life cycle of the particles. 
Right, and and so a particle. I'm gonna. I want to just make a quick particle interface here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, this also has a position. Um, and so a, we have a velocity. We have a lot of different things. Yeah, uh, I think I think velocity feels right. Or do we want a constant velocity for all particles? And if if that's the case, then it's a property of the emitter and not the particle. Right. Oh damn. Yep. Good point. Yeah. Maybe position, color, and size. Okay. Well, what do we want to render? Are these just circles? We could just do circles up, up front. That might be a, an easy way of doing this, right? That's that's what I was thinking. Yeah, just like. Okay. Yeah, and and I like the the. Maybe I think... radius then is the is the right way to, to mm -hmm. describe that. Yeah, and is that are you thinking that? I assume this looks better when you have some variation. Like if you're doing a small range of random sizes, yeah. We're gonna randomize the shit out of this. Yes. Great. Great. Um, yeah. Love it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, sweet. And then yeah, let's just let's just start adding some numbers to this. Hundred. Thousand and this dot arc equals uh, math dot pi. Oops. Yeah, I Make would actually say circle. let's not the arc. I, I'm 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 prematurely abstracting. I I think what we can do is just say that if this is a general explosion that we're going to be doing, yep, it'll be a random orientation between zero and two pi, which cool. means that the particle might you might have an orientation on the particle object itself. That's true. Uh, and not on the emitter necessarily, because we don't need directionality. Yes, exactly. Cool. Great. Okay, sweet. So yeah, that makes sense. So then our update is, um, let's see. So particle. So I'm gonna say like um, this dot particle. Oh wait, no, we want to do. Or uh, let i equal zero, i less than this dot particle rate. So we're going to add this many particles. Um, dot push. And then, uh, can we do a new particle? So yeah. This is going to have a, um, this is going to happen once per frame uh, as coded, right? Correct. Uh, Is that what we actually want? Like every single frame, we're gonna have n number of particles. Mm. Mm -hmm. Versus like setting a like a sort of a the same thing we have the shooter where it's like there's a a last fire time where like we let it fire every hundred milliseconds, shoot out some particles. This is a really interesting. Let's, well, let's we could go. have particles per frame. That's what that's what the particle rate is, right? That's what it is right and, now. Yeah. Okay. So maybe what we can have is like a. This is almost like a token bucket uh, rate limiter or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or similar to the timer thing that we were talking about, where, where the emitter has this sense of how many particles it should spawn. This frame, mm -hmm. and that accumulates over time by the rate, right? It's it's a per frame rate. Right. But then each time we spawn a particle, we'll subtract one from that number. Does that make sense? So, and that'll, that'll actually generate really nicely to the rate is like half a particle per frame. That hmm. value on the emitter would start at like zero. The next frame would be 0 0.5. You still wouldn't spawn anything. The next frame after that would be one. You would spawn a particle at that point, and then you would subtract one from it because you spawned the particle, right? And that would also work with uh, values of, like rates that are over the one as well. So if your if your rate was like one point five mm -hmm. particles per, the first frame you would spawn one. One second frame you spawn two because you'd hit yeah. yeah. That's clever. Okay. Um, so is that? Uh... Sorry, there's so we need to track um, part of particle rate like is that particle, particle buffer buff, or accumulated or something like or potential particles or something like that. Yeah. 
Yep, okay. Uh, this dot ten. Oops. I like that a lot because I was wondering how you could handle fractional numbers. Um, so we're going to do this dot potential particles equals plus, plus equals this. And then so particle rate, like 1.5 is a very interesting one. So I think that sounds great. Okay. Especially per frame. Um, and then so we have a new particle which has a, the position is this dot position. Uh, the color okay. is, I don't know, red. The radius, so here's where we're going to get some randomization and the orientation. Yeah, uh, we can do a fixed radius up front, right? Let's just call the radius. Sure, two pixels. What is it, two? What units are we in? Should be pixels. pixels? Yeah. OK. So that'll be yeah. small. Um, and, and the, the orientation, orientation could just be north for now. It could just be zero if you wanted to. And just yeah. we could try. OK. It's randomly in a circle is easy. Right? Isn't okay. that That's random between zero and 6.28? Yep. And then. So this would actually be kind of a, a while loop, right? It's like while. Oh, right. While this stuff potential particle is greater than one, or greater than equal to one, right? That's right. Yeah, I like that a lot. And then we subtract one from potential particles, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Stop it. Minus equals one. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay, and so then, then we want to update position of the particles as well, right? Now, yeah, do we want to do that? So this is this is new particles spawn. These start sort of where they are. Do we want to update existing particles and spawn in the center, or should we update and? Or should we spawn and kick them out a little bit to start? Um, I would say that their initial positions, initial states, should be their renderable states. Uh, so I would do the moving before the spawning. Uh, and if we wanted them to be at different yeah. positions, we could randomize the position away from yep. the. Yeah. Cool. I totally agree. Uh, yeah. Move existing particles. Yeah. So that's this dot particles dot for each. Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, so let's I realize see. that we, yeah. we might want to put a um, we might want to put a lifespan on the particle object itself. How do how do we know when particles die? Ah, great, great point. Um, more more like a, a start time, spawn time. It, it really depends on how we deal with uh, killing them or ignoring them at least. Um, would we remove them from the array or would we, uh, would we simply set a flag on them and then not render them, right? Like, how, how, how do you think you want to do that? That's a good question. Um, hmm. <laughs> I was thinking remove from array and, and maybe it's kill all particles is the first step. So we filter, we move, we add new ones. Is our update? Okay, group. that sounds that sounds great. Yeah, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and then so, uh, yeah. So let's see. I actually want to grab oh, shooter. Oh god, it's just dates out now. I love JavaScript. Um, time equals. So we're gonna we'll just work with dates out now a bunch okay. once for this whole function, so we don't like do it a bazillion times. Yep. This takes spawn time timestamp. Cool. Okay, so this is our combination of position and orientation that our movers are using. So I'm just gonna. Oh, God, I love it. It's so easy. So easy. We spent the whole day figuring that out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's see. Particle. This is P. Yeah. 
Ah, and then we need this speed, which is... We'll just hard code something in there for now. Um, yeah, let's we'll, we'll start with one, and I'll just make sure a note, particle, particle speed. Let's give vec2, so... Uh, oh, right. Vec2 facing north? Mm -hmm. Right. What is... Zero orientation is actually facing... Um, East, oh, it, right? it's uh, that, right? Negative one is up. That's oh, what, that's, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, 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 what our that's right. what our player speed is. It's a upwards vector. Okay. Um, change name. Well, well, I actually think that maybe the speed should be uh, one zero and let the orientation deal with that. The reason why is like I think we should treat uh, zero orientation as always facing on the positive x axis. Does that make sense? Um, say that, no, say that again, sorry. Um, I, I think orientation zero, like, if you have an entity and they're facing z the angle zero, I think they oh. should be facing east. Okay, sure. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. And I think the reason why it's different for the player is because we designed the the triangle of the player to be like pointier out the north. So mm -hmm. the orientation for the player is a little bit different. Actually, it doesn't really matter as long as we have a consistent way of dealing with it. I'm fine with however we want to do it. Whatever you think the right orientation should be. I actually do think that like 12 o'clock is a reasonable zero orientation if you wanted to do it that way. But if that's the case, then we should restore that back to what it was originally was. Right, which, which is... Next. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's unfortunately how all our speed has been done uh, throughout this. So let, let's keep it that way. Okay. I'm sure. trying to think if we might regret that, but it might be fine. It's really, it's really just that, like every particle is going to shoot. Mm. The orientation is just offset from from twelve o'clock. That's that's right. basically all yeah. that. That's what we're saying. Finding as being. Right, and since we're doing a, a circle, since we're doing a circle, I think it's fine for this because yeah. it it won't matter. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So that spawns, that moves, uh, and then I guess just render, which is this dot particles dot for each p, and then mm -hmm. ctx dot. Oh, we had. It's what, a, what was our circle? Open a, make a path, right? Like, uh, no, we had it. We had a circle thing, right? Circles were easy. MDN cop, uh, canvas draw canvas. circle. Yeah. Oh yeah, we. Oh, we, we don't had... even have to do path. We can just do a. Um, they must have like a draw circle primitive, right? Like I'm. Yeah, it's doing uh, the path. We did this for. Oh, maybe maybe it is path and then arc and then that's it. Yeah. All right. Guess so. Okay. I don't love it. <laughs> I'd rather just have draw circle with X Y color. Yeah. So. Same. Yeah. Uh... Uh, okay. So particle. P dot position dot zero, P dot position one, um, radius is P dot, scroll down, P dot radius, uh, and then the start angle is zero and math dot pi times two. Yeah, great. And then. Um, uh, oh, is the color, right? Right. Um, fill rule, huh? Oh, because we said fill oh, style. Fill style. Uh, yep. It got us. Do I need to apply the path as well? Oh no, sorry. That's no, that's the, that's our that's library. That's the path to class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That thing is great. I love this. I didn't even notice that you put all these comments in here. Was that was that there the whole time? Uh, I did write them. I, I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Why are you?
you unhappy? Uh, we need a closing parenthesis. Yep. Thank you. Okay, cool. So if the bullet has, let's see. All right, so this is, yeah. Wait, where's our, ah, so mark for deletion. No, hit. Uh, so we're gonna say entity dot game dot dot emitters. Ah, it needs to be push. Yeah. God, do I have to, do I have to define an I emitter? I don't. You know what? Right now, we don't actually have to. Okay. Because particle emitter doesn't touch common. It's so yeah. it's so disjoint from um, the rest of the game code, which is great. Yeah, I mean, a particle emitter really just has an update and render. It probably doesn't need to expose anything else outside of it. So the interface would be pretty lightweight if you did that. I'm sure. not I'm not trying to make a case for it. I'm just saying it it will be easy when inevitably we do need to put the game from the particle emitter. <laughs> also true. Yep, I'm just lazy. Uh, I, yep. I think maybe after this works, I will be down to do that. I just, I want yeah, it to work. I'm not, I'm not making the case. I'm just saying it'll be easy. Yeah. Legit. Uh, let's see. Uh, dot push. And then what does our particle emitter need in the constructor? Oh, nothing, actually. We're just going to make it yeah. and set the position. Well, we probably need to give it the position, probably, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, but we've been doing equals entity dot transform dot position. Ah, OK. And you know what? Explosion. OK. Whew, crash. Uh, huh. Is it, it, maybe we should look at the console in the browser and see what, what it's complaining about. Game emitters dot push is undefined. Uh, is it not compiling game.js? That's a great question. Let's I mean, let's just drop in a console. Yo. This dot emitters. Emitters exist. You can do that with console.log? Yeah, you can just comma you can comma string as much shit together as you want. It's great, right? Yeah, I think the compiler might have gotten stuck a second ago. Let's see if this is fine or if it still has a yeah. angry. There we go. Okay, cool. Yep, yeah, parcel has had some weird Whoa. <laughs> like, yeah. Awesome. Oh, it's delightful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our, our art game, uh, our, our sort of procedural art generator continues to delight and surprise. Holy shit. What the fuck? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Okay, uh, great. Well, that's really cool. Let's see what's happening. So we are, we should be adding one particle per frame. One and a half, yeah. One and a half. Um, and then we subtract from potential particles. Uh, you know what? I, I want to do something. I want to I see this really blow up. So it's, it's not. That's weird. Did it freeze? No, it, it just runs out of things to do. Oh my god, no. what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so something something is randomly ending up in the wrong spot. The only thing that's random is this orientation. I guess let's let's log our particle and see what happens. Ah oh, man. 
It's also very, it's very weird that console.log is no longer here. Maybe there's no, no difference. Console.log this dot particles. Oh god, it's gonna be a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff. Because the but... particle emitter is gonna continue to uh, emit. Yeah. Okay. So maybe maybe let's. Uh... Yep. Fair. So uh... let's see. Start time. Let's let's put the life cycle on or the lifespan on this then to get it a yeah. little reasonable. How is the particle emitter going to remove itself from the game? I was wondering about that. Uh, I was at least going to have. I was going to live with infinite particle emitters, and uh, they just do nothing. Okay, that's fine. Hey, it's a that's performance fine. problem, but. Oh God! It's oh, I so... see. You're basically going to say. Early out of update and render if the start time plus a lifespan is yeah exactly less than yeah yep um yeah if uh this dot start time plus this dot lifespan less than timestamp. I mean, really, I guess it's that uh, there will be no new particles. Yeah. So I, I would like to kill. I would like to kill old particles, and then render does nothing because there should be no particles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. This dot particles dot for each. Uh, maybe we can do a filter. What do you think about that? Oh, I feel great about but that. Thank you. This dot part particles equals this dot particles dot filter. Yep. This dot start time plus yeah, p dot start time this time, right? Ah, uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, less than timestamp. Uh, sorry, greater than timestamp. Uh, greater right? than timestamp. Yeah. yeah. And same and then return. for this. Um, well, it's going to be the opposite of that, right? Because the particle we're going to is this filter? Is it, well, what is filter? I forget the, the the valence of the. If it's true, do you keep it, or if it's true, do you do you do you, do you remove it? If it's true, you keep it. Okay, so greater than is the correct thing to have there. Yeah. And then Let, yeah, okay. Let, let's see how this goes. Um, great. Interesting. So, so here's something fun, which is they're all the same. Uh, I think it's rendering every particle on top of each other. Why is that? Is it, this needs to be a vec2.clone. We're, we're, uh, take, we're taking position and just going ham on it. Yep. Yep. Um, was there a copy? Yeah, great. Cute. Oh, that's cool. It looks cute. Like. Yeah, I love it. Okay, that's extremely silly, but clearly works. Nice. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I do think these should be able to remove themselves somehow. Um, maybe they mark themselves as dead. Like, stop dead equals false. Uh. What does our what does our game do for this? Because it's it's calling each one and updating, right? Yeah. We can um, filter. You could just remove the dead ones from the emitters. You could just this dot emitters equals this dot emitters dot filter. That, that's what I was saying. Yeah, like. Yeah. So they kind of clean themselves up. Right. E not equal. Not e dot dead. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's easy. These comments mean nothing. Yeah. It's, it's really funny. 
Are they marking themselves as dead yet? Oh, they're not. Thank you. Uh, they're dead if their time, if their time is up and they have no particles, right? Mm hmm. Um, um, and I think we should still animate the particles, right? Like, I don't think they're dead until yeah. they have no particles. It's really just that they stop emitting. So yep. maybe... Uh, particles... I mean, we, we can just do it here. If, if, we're, if we're done emitting and there's no particles, dead, and then we always return early. So we kill, we kill particles. We let the particles die off. Yes, and then I also think that we should maybe put the move particles above this check, because we even if even if they're yeah. no longer spawning, we should move them, right? Yep, that makes a ton of sense. And then the spawn should be the else clause of this oh, line, yeah. line fifty seven. Right? Great, and we don't even need the early return. Update just continues. Yeah, update update just updates. I like that. I like no early return. Cool. I really like early returns, but this is cool. <laughs> ah. um, well, because it's not always an early return, so I, I actually really, really, really like this structure. I yeah. Right. If we if we wanted to early return, I'm into it. Yeah. Uh, that's that's sick, man. Okay. So I guess now is the tuning point where we're just like. There's just a ton of tuning. Yeah. This is pretty you fast. Can. This seems pretty. Yeah. Yep, that's a little a little slower. Yeah, I and like really, it. Really, like if these are explosions, it's probably like, honestly, it's some strange strange thing like this, right? Uh, with maybe like rate of three, because we really wanted to pow. Oh, these should maybe live longer. Yeah, you got this. Now we Look can at just. That. Yeah. That's cool. This is. This is extremely fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now, I mean, let's let's try to do a couple different things. Let's randomize the size as well. Yep. Yep. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Size, so color. Article uh, will now have size property. They already have a size property. I don't remember. We. No. They have radius. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's randomize that radius. Yeah. Oh yeah, they do. Um, cool. Um, times. Too, so we'll get everything from like yep gosh can you see that that looks really sick yeah, it's really cool yeah uh let us randomize the color as well mm -hmm. yep uh that sounds great so let's we I'm gonna sample switch. from an array of three or four different colors right something like that oh uh, i was gonna i was about to do some randomization and that's a much better suggestion <laughs> <laughs> okay okay Const particle colors equals so we've got red, we've got um, I don't know how to do orange in RGB. I, uh, <laughs> you know who does? That one. Um, uh, yeah, and, and we can throw a, throw a little bit of gray in there or black, and you can put the same color in multiple times if you want to be more probable, right? That's oh, that's really clever, yeah. Let's let's see what that looks like. That's a little, a little red, a little orange red. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll throw Some a gold, gold in there. Yeah. Yeah. And and a couple blacks. Yeah. Ah, that's. Is cool. there a JavaScript function like Ruby's dot Ruby's like enumerable dot sample? That's like the dude, best freaking function ever. But uh, I know, dude. I just this just came up in the tech screen I just did where it was like I was like, is there a JavaScript array dot sample? And I'm pretty sure the answer is no. But I. I use it in Ruby so much. Uh, does Lodash have it? Like, I would not be averse Wait. to getting Lodash in here, or something like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I bet it does. The other way to do that is like we basically do random from zero to one. That, that's the only way. Yeah. And we divide the space into like four equal chunks. It's just like friggin' messy, right? Um, yep. Here you go, Lodash. Okay. Let's do it. It's it's finally time to add a dependency. Ah, oh, we have a couple yeah. dependencies. Yeah. And and Lodash, as far as dependencies go, is not. I love it. Is there I a feel... new thing that's better than Lodash? I feel like Lodash killed underscore, 
Blue dash killed underscore. Then, oh yeah. And then what else what's the new what's the new hotness for this? I think it's low dash. Okay. Uh so let's see, import sample from Yeah. What I what I love is we need, we need to get we need to get it at types slash low dash. It I'm seems, surprised. It seems happy no, it should be TypeScript already. Okay. Yeah, I think I think it's actually already doing it. Let's find out. Well, that's not. Oh man! Oh, oh that's so sick. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Look at them particles. Cool, 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 cool. So, so one I more want... thing you could do is randomize, uh, randomize the velocity. Yep. And I was also checking out that. Uh, yeah, I, I just cut the speed in half to sort of trim yeah, it a little bit, but I, I think that makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. um, does that actually do it? Uh, so let's see, actually, math.random is giving us zero to one. So we can just add another, yeah. That's so good. <laughs> I kind of want the I kind of want them to be juicier. What happens if we uh, juicier? Maybe what do you think? like let's try multiplying math at random times negative two. What would that look like? It's gonna it's gonna blow. Ooh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Juicy indeed. I love the black in there, right? It's really, it's really it, good. It adds a lot, and the the orange and yellow is really, does does feel like the right colors. So this is game making right here. It's all about the feel, right? God, I love it. Um, I'd like to. I would really like to have the position be further ahead. It needs to be like half a tile ahead of the bullet. Okay. Yeah. And I guess that's. I think this is up to the bullet to set the position. Yeah, this is our middle position. Yeah. So um, we can get our whole crazy, take our orientation and add something to it thing. Yeah. Right, right. It's the, it's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. That might end up needing to be a function. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like we're going to do it so much. Uh, so let's see. So we're going to take um, this dot position. Oh, you know what? Let's just grab this. That should be vec2 create. Uh, Good. Yeah. Uh, oh, and then that's entity.transform.position, entity.transform.orientation. And so this is tile size. So this will this will throw out a whole tile in front if. Yeah. Uh, if I set it to anything. Nope, if I didn't reset it to the default. And by in front, I mean behind. That feels pretty good. Yeah, let's see what over two looks like just to see if that hits the point. But, oh, that's actually perfect. Yeah, incredible. Well, dang. We did a lot of we stuff we want to do today. We have a lot of ground here, right? We're doing damage. We've got particle emitters. Man, this is great. This I feel like real... I know. I feel like we laid a lot of groundwork in the past streams, uh, and it's been really easy to augment our systems, which I think is a, a testament to good setup. To our to my to my over abstracting over engineering tendencies. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad you had the the abstraction in your head because, dang, it's great. Yeah. Um, well, cool. what this has made is that like we can put this code in one file and it, we're not freaking out about it, right? Like it's relatively tractable to add new behaviors. Yeah. Uh, I real quick, I gotta make sure the emitters are actually dying. Wonderful. Cool. Well, you'll notice when the. You leave your browser open and then your computer crashes, right? I, I wanted to like not crash the stream. 
Yeah. It was, it was high on my uh, list. We've got an emitter to the front of the tank to do the, uh, oh, like the, the muzzle flare. Little muzzle. Oh, that'd be really sick. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. And then we can actually sort of fully parameterize yeah. this. Let's think of uh, it. Yeah. Cool. And, and like a lot of these parameters, like the color palette, we randomize, all these things can be, you can imagine, be parameterized. Absolutely. Uh, oh, I'm so excited. Okay, uh, great. So let's let's see. So we've got our player, and really, it's it's probably the shooter that manages the muzzle flash because that's also making bullets. Yeah, exactly. Great. So let's bring this in here. Excuse me? No. <laughs> no, I, I think not. Is it trying to give you like a bell? Is there something in your terminal that's yelling at you? I don't know. Terminal's not even open. That's very concerning. That is, maybe the VS code has a, a terminal running in the back. I don't know. I, I think that must have been what just happened. Entity dot. Uh, game dot emitters dot push. Uh, so let's see. Uh, const muzzle flash equals new particle emitter, and then let's push that. And let's and then see. you're starting the position. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So we're gonna yeah, we're start we're starting from. Starting from busted, but that's okay. Yep. Yep. I see where it's going, and I and I like it. And this is where having the arc is going to matter, right? Like being able to constrain the orientation of the. Uh... That's right. Did we put that in here? We didn't. We we started with it, and I was like, you know what? We shouldn't do that yet. And I'm yep. glad we did, but now we're going to have to constrain it, right? Cool. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, excellent. So let's see. Bullet, shooter, player, shooter. Um, and then actually, I wanted I wanted bullet as well. So, surprise, surprise! I want this exact same line of code again. Let's should we? Well, whatever. Let's 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 copy it one more time. For let's make that sake. let's make that the off stream PR where we uh, fix okay. that one. Yeah. But yeah, I, I also kind of want to move our components into a subdirectory. There's there's some there's, there's some like code janitor stuff that would be fun to do. I've, I've been thinking about that, yeah. That would be excellent. I think code janitor might be my, like, professional calling, ultimately. Like, a lot it of really stuff, is, like, it? I wouldn't be able to, like, type as fast as you. Like, I would, like, we would have gotten, like, half as far into the stream if it was, if it was me driving, but uh, <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure janitor. I, yeah, are you saying I'm, I'm willing to, I'm willing to accept more of a mess? That might, that might be the case. Not at all. No, I think you're just a better programmer, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great, because you're about to be one of my references, so keep saying it. Yeah. Uh, excellent. OK, so it's parameter time. Uh, so let's see. These are constants. This is constant. I'm trying to just all this get, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so particle rate. Particle lifespan, emitter lifespan. This should probably want to be one of those uh, object parameters. I was just thinking that. Do you know yeah. What I mean? yeah. Yep. Oh, TypeScript? and we can still give it a type. TypeScript yeah. makes it a pain in the ass, though, right? It's no, not not even slightly. Um, oh. Particle config, because uh, we're just going to. Okay. Yeah. We're export, export interface particle. Uh -huh. Oh, and then you're going to even put that in the in the class itself or something like that. You can even. Well, I want, I, I, other people need to use it, I think. Maybe not, okay. actually. Well, look, uh, you can just, uh, in line 36, I think you can just inline the, 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 the class, the, 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 the definition of the config right there, right? It doesn't need to be anywhere else. Oh, that's true. 
That's I think that's just gonna drive me crazy. Okay. I really like the inline um, anyway, but uh, but we might as well so, make position uh, configurable, right? If we're gonna like anything that we're gonna like pass or mm -hmm. modify from that side, we might as well just stick in big, right? Yep, I think that makes sense. And uh, yeah, um, let me get this. I want to make sure that I can actually that I don't have to export this interface. I think it I think it'll be okay, and then I. I will inline it the way you suggested. Params. Okay, so uh, great. Everything is broken. Okay. I love it uh, because yeah. Oh, that's actually pretty sick. Okay, so particle lifespan, particle rate, emitter lifespan. So let's see, I gotta remember what my constants were. I think it was that. Yeah. And what would be, you know, like this is this is super cool because like none of this is config, you know, like there's all kinds of awesome things we could do. We could we could put the emitter definitions into a library and then have like a emitter designer if we wanted to. You know, you could imagine like having a little uh, Oh yeah. Little yeah, tool yeah. That has little sliders and you can kinda just like, yeah. You get what I'm putting down. Mm hmm mm hmm I feel like I've I feel like I've seen something very similar to that in the past. Um, in, oh yeah, in some... I'm sure that Unity and all these other engines have like a particle designer. Um, it's basically if you're a game artist, which you spend ninety percent of your time doing, it's just like <laughs> just like tuning particle effects. Yeah. Okay, you know what? I I really like this style. I was wrong. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Equals parent stop. Copy that here. What, what, what is the API design here? Should the vec two? Should, uh, should, should, should yeah. the caller be responsible for doing the copy, or or? You know what? Why why even give ourselves the option to shoot yourself in the foot for? Yeah, yeah. For what is a single memory same... operation? Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, I hear you, and at the same time, I know we'll have that strange bug again. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. This feels great. Yeah. Okay. Rad. Really so so let's well, let's make this muzzle flash smaller. Uh, shorter maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's definitely it's definitely got a little more of a a pop to it. And I liked three. I think I like a hundred too. Yeah. Just just a little burst. And if we can, can we scoot it out in front of the, uh, the tank a little bit further? Uh, yeah, yeah, we totally can. Um, two point two or something like that, or like you want it, you want it a little in front, which is that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now the bullet's not spawning in the right place, but that's okay, right? Although we could we could no. modify it now, right? Because like fuck, we should do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I forgot. I forgot the bullets just on top of the tank. Maybe you can at least make the emitter position and the bullet position the same. Like that's one one thing that we can do right now. Um, Whoa. Yeah. We. I just defined that variable. Yep. Yep. Very and smart. It's not going to look perfect, but it'll be okay. Right. Let's let's find out. Yeah. I think I think it'll probably be an improvement. That's yeah. fine. That's that looks really great. Yeah. Also, there's no no more of this like driving driving the bullet. Oh, yeah. Jeff, Jeff, there's so many more <laughs> particles. We've added new art. Yeah. yeah. Wow. This is really cool. Yeah. This is this is totally a little game. It, 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 it's amazing how much the bullet of sizzle changes the feel entirely, right? I'm, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm just so jazzed. Uh... Okay, so let's see. So we want to get an arc going in here. And that yes. actually gets very interesting. So, because the emitter now needs an orientation. Uh, 
Yep, um, and an arc. Yeah. And uh, right. Anyway, let me get the. And those are both configurable, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was tr trying. I'm trying to pull these out into what we said and what we don't. So let's see. So for the explosion, orientation doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And art and the art is. is yeah. Great. Art number. Orientation number. Uh, boy, is there a way I can just splat these properties? Because that's really what I want. Well, you can make config a an interface. Oh, yeah. Or you could do this dot object dot merge. Or Whoa. what is the uh, what is the element wise copy in JavaScript? I don't know. I feel like it's merge. well, merge is, the, is Ruby, I think. Yeah. Anyways, you're doing great. I think the line by line thing makes it really clean. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. It just feels like a lot of a lot of copy paste. Okay, so that's set up. Now we can work with these orientations. Yes. Uh, and let's say pi over two. So we want like that ninety degree arc. Yeah. Okay, and then. So it's gonna be about it's it's gonna be about the orientation of this, right? Right. right, right, right. And um, so basically what we want is we take a value so if, if between, I start with, yeah, if I start with this, the arc is going to, yeah. Yeah. They're all going in the same direction right now, right? Right. So, um, and, and they're and they're going in the correct direction for orientation. So it's going to be this um, plus plus math dot random math times arc over two. Uh, well, it's actually going to be in between negative arc over two, positive arc over two. Does that make ah, sense? Yes. Um, so we're going to do uh, minus this dot arc over two. Yes. Again, it's LERP. Interesting. Uh, I think over two is actually wrong. I think it's just arc. I think I, think I'm, I, think I messed it up. This, the, what I wanted was the minus this dot arc, because that's oh, actually. So uh, you're right. It's minus this dot arc over two, but ah, the math dot yeah, random is. Thank you. That's, that's it. Uh, this dot random. Let me see if I can sort of. Oh, that's what it is. Too many parens. Uh huh. Hey, that looks great. Pew, pew, pew. Yep. Dude. Nice. When you're making sound effects, you can tell you want sound effects now, right? <laughs> we need oh, audio engine. Boy, time, time to do some web audio. Um, okay, what I would wow. love to also do is vary the colors for, because I think the muzzle flare should not have black, it should have white. Oh, yeah, and probably like fewer as well. Like maybe maybe like a white uh, and a gray and a or yellow. Or colors that are closer together and maybe closer to white. Like they yep. maybe skew white more. Yep. Because you know I am about whiteness. <laughs> oh, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> You know, every every non-white person has a has a phase of their upbringing where they want to reject their own heritage. They want to be white for a while. Oh, that is decidedly not the case. I'm I have grown out of that uh, quite conclusively. <laughs> Excellent. Well, decidedly Excellent. not the case for me right now. I would say. I mean, you know, you can you can have as much mayonnaise as you want. <laughs> we we got that culture, and it's great. You know, I've heard, I haven't tried, that making a grilled cheese sandwich with mayonnaise rather than butter as the kind of lubricant 
is supposed to be really awesome. On the outside of the bread? Yes. Whoa. That's honestly fucking wild, and I kind of love it. Yeah, I like it too, actually. I like the idea of it. Because, um, like, you know, fresh mayonnaise is just oil and egg yolk, right? I mean, and I eat veganaise, so... See? Look, look, at, look at the wonderful cultural contributions the British have made to the world. White sauce. I uh, see that one more time. Oh, I, it, the, color, the colors haven't oh. changed yet. Oh, the colors haven't changed yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I want to do. Let's do like a white and a gray. Can you see it? And maybe, yeah, and then uh, maybe we can, uh, I mean, it's actually rad. Maybe the FF4500 can be more like FF9933. I just want to make it like paler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually, I think I want the arc even tighter. I want the particle lifespan. Yeah, that's a pretty nice spray. Right. What happens if I do this? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I right. just wanted to, I just wanted to see. Yeah. No, 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 I, I, I totally get it. So here, here's a thought. I actually want I want these to shoot a little faster. Um, okay. So I think I, I think I have another another parameter. You want uh, you want the speed, yeah. Yeah, which is is that there's this sucker, yeah. Um, yep. Particle speed. I think it's actually going to be the whole. I think it should be the whole vec two. Well, I don't know. They're linear, so it's just yeah. It's just the speed. It's just the forward speed. It's, I, yeah, I, I, think, I, I think it's just number. Yeah. So I absolutely see how we could get to that. Yeah. Um, this dot, no, probably, yeah. Ah, so here, here's, here's why I wanted the interface, so that these two could be the same thing. That's all. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because then particle yeah, emitter so extends particle config. Or you have a particle config inside of the particle emitter, something like that, yeah. Oh, if it's, yeah, if it's that object. Yep, totally. Oh, then we can just assign it. I'm picking up what you're putting down. You already said it earlier. Yeah. I it. We'd have to make sure that we copy the velocity uh, in the call <laughs> site, which is OK. Yeah. Uh, OK, so I, whoa, this dot particle speed, nope. Um, I'm just gonna put that out there. So here's a thought. I'm gonna this will this will bust our speed for a second. They're all gonna move at the same speed. Okay. Um, particle speed. I'm gonna call it two, and I'm gonna negate it here because people shouldn't have to worry about. Yeah. That implementation. Speed is directionless. Yeah. Yeah. Ten. Just just to see what's up. Um, so the speed's no longer randomized, which. Oh, that's extremely silly, but great. Um, uh, the stream stopped updating for me for a second there. Oh. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. It's a constant speed. Are you gonna give it a range? Is that what you're? Is that what you're going for here? Well, it's kind of speed and lifespan is kind of a range, right? Um. Uh. Well, no. What I'm saying is speed is a range if you want to randomize between a range. Uh, it's the same as arc, right? Like arc is a arc is the range. Oh, that's... sorry. Yeah, what I was going to do, I was going to, I was going to do this dot particle speed, um, and then I was going to jitter it by two. Yeah. So like you set a value and you kind of get randomization around that. Oh god, I've broken some shit. Never mind. Uh. No, maybe that's crazy. Oh, I see. Yeah. I, I think maybe we do that range a, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So particle speed. So speed is, is a tuple of yep. numbers. Yeah. Yep, we got a number number now. Speed range. Yeah. Nope. Not 
not ranger, just range. So this goes from like zero to two. Yeah. And this goes from like, I don't know, five to eight or something. And then, so it's math.random times this dot particle speed. speed. Speed one minus speed zero plus speed zero. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Zero plus. needs another set of parentheses. Gosh, these are fairly ridiculous. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll make a lerp function eventually. It'll it'll, it'll get there. <laughs> right, right. Um, God. Sorry, what am I what am I losing here? Um, oh, the closing bracket on that vec too. There we go. And this whole thing is negative because up is velocity. Yep. I am I am starting to come to regret that. Okay, that's something. Our oh. I changed the wrong thing. Particle feed range? Is that yeah, I changed I changed the rate to a tuple for the uh, muzzle flash and uh, okay. Very uh, ta-da emoji, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I guess, yeah, maybe, maybe like, I guess adding more variation to the range sort of, yeah, helps, helps take it from a full cone to a, um, yeah. seven, eight looks very silly, but two, eight has a little more life to it, yeah. Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah. Dang, dude. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Sorry, you've had, just had to watch me fiddle with particle emitters, but I guess that's uh, not at all. No, this is amazing. Literally, I'm actually though. thrilled. I, I feel like the wall explosions uh, could be bigger, but I think we've made really, really great progress here. Uh, uh, give, give me bigger, real quick. What's what's you feel like they need to be more particly or? Larger uh, or both? I think the speed range maybe should be like zero point five to two point five, maybe. Mm -hmm. The fact that the speed range could be a zero means that there's going to be something. Like, yeah. Right. And then maybe the lifespan is a little bit higher, just a twin, a smidge higher. Yeah. Um, kind of, kind of more fireworks, I mean, you know. It needs to be smaller and denser, uh, so maybe one seventy-five for the lifespan, and then yeah. speed range is one point five to two point five. I think also turning turning up particle rate will give us denser. Uh, yeah. If we if we turn down lifespan and speed. See, at least I'll just fill it real quick. Let's see if that. I love it. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. Bigger. Maybe, maybe it does just need more particles hanging out in there. Boom. All right. Well, we should mess with it, but I love yeah. it. Yeah, I think lifespan try 125, maybe. Mm -hmm. Feels a little better to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's Very interesting cool. that the, the way our emitter works right now is that you, after the time span has expired, maybe it's something we can we can tweak. Is that you kind of have this like every every explosion is like 
an expanding circle. But maybe once time span expires, actually, the things on the edge could start to, like, fade themselves. So you don't have to watch, like, the inner circle catch up to the to the outer ring. But instead, like, the whole thing starts to diminish. Yeah, Tuning. I mean, more stuff to do. You could have particles that have that you know are going to make it further, and then maybe have a state on them that change. They change their behavior or something like that. Totally right. And, yeah, and we could randomly like pick some extra lifespan numbers too. So like randomly yeah. add fifty to the lifespan of a couple. Okay, I know we're, we're running close on time, but yeah, sorry. here's one juicy thing you can add. Let's randomize yeah. the rate, the size of the particle for the the wall explosions. Randomize the size. Wait, don't we do? Yeah. We do. Oh. Oh, we do. Well, is do that you want... happening? Yeah. Do you want this to be? Yeah. Totally. It's totally. There's there's a bunch of different sizes. All right. Let me. I got you. No, no, no. Uh, let's make let's make it really obvious. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. Oh. That looks I... rad. The <laughs> you know you know what it is. Radius radius needs to be a parameter, and uh, the wall explosion needs a bigger radius. <laughs> That looks so much better. Yeah. I guess, you know, we could set some defaults on some of this stuff. But you know, uh, that's kind of silly. I actually kind of like, I kind of like this design, actually. Makes no assumptions. They get, yeah, they have to be really, really specific. Yeah. So let's see, the explosion radius is like 10, and then the muzzle flash radius is like... Mm, wait, sorry. Oh, probably because I set it back to two instead of this dot particle radius. Particle radius. Oh, you're right. <laughs> okay, that's beautiful. That's an explosion. Yeah. Cool, dude. Uh, and, and radius. You may want to make a range the same way that the speed is arranged, because there's like really tiny particles in there as well. Um, I was thinking that, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I think we're good for now. We we can continue to tweak, right? Yeah, and I, I don't I don't mind the occasional like tiny tiny noise either. God, that's extremely sick. Cool. All right. Um, I'm gonna commit this. Happy nine o'clock. This is so yeah. fun. Congratulations, Tom. You're making a video game. Dude, I'm a... I thought particle mirrors were going to be harder. Uh, no, I mean, making them performant is interesting. I, I, I will say as one note that oftentimes you see particle emitters um, structured as uh, a structure of arrays rather than an array of structures. We have currently have an array of structures, right? We have right. an array of particles. Each their own kind of like properties mm -hmm. and just is the same way that we kind of like treat treat entities that way uh the other way that you could do particles is you treat every property as almost like its own like little component right and then oh, you just have an array of positions you'd have an array of radiuses you'd have an array of velocities you have an array of orientations hmm. that sort of thing uh and i don't know i, I think performance wise again like that matters if you are iterating over one of those arrays and doing a computation and it matters that like when you load an item of that array the rest of the item like the rest of the 64 other items in that array are also in your level one cache and the cpu you know it's, it's right. that sort of thing that you care about yeah um, that makes sense I, I can definitely see like yeah we are introducing like a lot of a lot this is one of those like n squared kind of looping situations to me where we're just like we've put a lot of work in here i'm glad it's only a couple particles uh by the way we can shoot through walls now <laughs> we've added a bug because uh, of, of the bullet position changing in front of the thing so it's oh yes of course. it's exactly what we've always feared which is that it moves past the it's edge tunneling. before yeah. yeah it's fine cool well jeff thank you this was a wonderful one Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'll see you on the next one. Yep. Sunday, seven, Sunday, three to five Pacific. Uh, yep. I'm taking next week off, so it's going to be great. Um, I don't even know what I'm going to do with my time yet. I think Bunny and I want to go hiking a little bit, but then. Uh... Oh, nice. So we're <laughs> off just all, all next week? 
Yeah, I'm just taking it completely off. I think Heck yeah. Monday's Memorial Day, you know, like, which is, right. yeah. Cool. Okay. I love it. All right, Dominic, congratulations. Right, Thank and, you. And, uh, yeah. Good night, everybody. Cheers.